Hello folks, this is Anthony once again from our YouTube channel, Honda Snowblower Enthusiast. If you want to know what to look for in buying a good used Honda Snowblower, stay tuned and I'll show you what I do. Save a lot of money and avoid buying a money pit of a machine. And look at this machine here, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful 1332. I'm going to show you some other machines and the pros and cons of each machine. Uh, before you start looking at it, inspect it, you talk to the, the seller for a few minutes, ask them when last time it was uh, serviced, uh, ask them if there's any issues that they know of, and then ask them why they're selling it. Maybe they're just upgrading to a new machine. Maybe they're moving away. Uh, maybe they're try just trying to sell a money pit of a machine that costs them too much money. Uh, from the pictures on an ad, only tell you part of the story. Uh, people are always asking me, Hey, Anthony, uh, this machine, this 1332 right here, it's $2,000. You think it's worth it? Well, how the heck do I know? I mean, the pictures look great. You know, the augers look great. Um, the machine's nice and clean. These are really nice augers. It has very, very good tracks. The machine's nice and clean. It's got an electric start. It practically looks new to me. It's about 10 years old. I says, but the pictures only tell part of the story. So I always tell people, look, if the pictures look good to me, then I'll go look at it. If the price is not too bad, I'll go look at it. Because you do have to do a personal inspection first and then start it up and test it. Test the drive, test the engine, you know, the throttle and everything. Then you can make a pretty good decision. So I'll show you today what to look for, the red flags, what I walk away from, or what I buy. On this machine here, this is our first example, 1332. Uh, the seller wanted two grand for it. Uh, this is three years ago. This past winter in the California Sierra, this machine probably would have gone from 2,500 to 3,000. It's a K model. It's, it's the best, uh, the K models, I believe, are the best machines that Honda ever made. The 928 and the 1332, they're beautiful machines, very sturdy, and they're just great machines. Uh, I've had a couple 928s, but I've never seen a 1332 like this. Well, anyways, the owner bought it for $2,000, then he brought it to me because he was having all kinds of problems. What happened was the gas tank had a lot of rust in it. So the rust got into the carburetor that's under here. You couldn't get it started, or if you got it started, it'd run real rough. <coughs> Excuse me. The carburetor was all clogged up. <coughs> Excuse me again. And we had to replace the car. I tried cleaning it out. I took it off. I soaked it in an ultrasonic cleaner. Two times, it still wouldn't work. Uh, it had rust in it. I couldn't get all the rust out of it. So we had to replace the carburetor, which I think was 130 something dollars on a 1332. And we had to replace the gas tank because it had rust in it. I don't bother trying to get the rust out of the gas tanks like some people do. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I just told the owner, I said, look, let's just replace the gas tank. Um, I found a good used tank for him. It has absolutely no rust in it. I don't know if you can see, it's probably not, but it's got no rust in it. We installed the new gas tank and the carburetor and I serviced it. And it ended up costing them a pretty penny. So $2,000 machine, you know, I think it was like $400 more or whatever. So looks can be deceiving. Uh, in this example, uh, $2,000 is not too bad, but he had ended up having to pay another uh, $400 to, get, to make it right. So that usually happens. <coughs> When you buy a used machine, 
the seller is never going to take it to the shop and spend two, three hundred, four hundred dollars. <coughs> excuse me again, sorry, on uh, servicing it before he sells it. So when you buy a used machine, most likely you're going to have to pay a little bit of money. So you try to fact that factor that in in your negotiations. On this machine here, this is over 30 years old. Our next example, it's an HS80. It looks pretty good. 33, 34 years old. Nice and clean. It doesn't show any kind of outside storage damage. Like I'll show you in a minute how to determine that. It's got pretty good augers. It looks pretty nice. I mean, this is this could be a buy. This could be a buy in my book. It doesn't have an electric start. It has good uh, tracks. It looks pretty good. And so I said, okay, I'll go look at it. So I went to look at it. I looked around. I didn't see any rust or corrosion. It's always been stored indoors. Those are the telltale signs. I'll show you over here. This is a machine is a <coughs> extreme example of a machine that's been left outside for years. You can see that the bucket, the paint job is all faded. It's been outside. You can see rust. There's rust all over the place. Rust on the muffler. There's rust in the tank. The tank was all rusty. This is an extreme example of a bad machine. It's got a lot of rust. The augers are just terrible. They're all, this is uh, I just wanted to show you this as, a, as, the, as the worst case scenario. Uh, I bought this actually. I bought it for parts. I'm not sure if it even runs, but I've been slowly taking parts off of it for other 50s. So when you're looking at the machine in the ads and in person, you want to look for examples of uh, neglect. Um, you know, you look for you look at the the sheaths of the cables and see if they're all dried and cracked. Uh, you you look if the plastic parts are all broken and cracked, and uh, rust and corrosion are telltale signs that the machine has been abused, left outside, not covered up or not uh, taken care of. So that's a red flag. This machine, like I said a couple minutes ago, is pretty nice. But it started on the first pull, actually. The engine runs great. and But the problem was with this machine, it has no first gear or second gear. So the transmission does it needs work. And on these older machines, some of the parts are no longer available. So if you're not very mechanical, I'd pass on a machine like this, unless you wanted it for parts. I was able to get the first gear to work. The third gear works great, and the reverse works great. But the second gear does not work. It could be the sub-transmission. It could be an adjustment. It's something I haven't had time to look at yet. But if, if, if it was you looking at it, I would say better pass on it. Transmission work can cost a lot of money. Uh, parts, some of the parts are NLA, no longer available. Uh, other parts that are not available on these older machines are the, are the tracks, the augers, uh, the auger gearbox. There's a couple other parts that are no longer available. Transmission parts and final drive gearbox parts. Uh, I sell these machines from time to time, but I usually try to sell them to somebody that's very mechanical. And I also have uh, I also have three or four parts machines: 80s, 55s, 50s, uh, and and uh, you can get used parts if you can do it yourself. If you have to take it to a shop, it's going to cost cost more money. Or you can get the parts on eBay. So to me, this was a pass for the, for the normal homeowner. Uh, I would pass on this machine unless you wanted parts. And that's what I bought it for.
Uh, I forgot to mention one thing that's pretty important when you're looking at a machine from the from the classified ads. You want to find out from the seller if this is a homeowner's machine or a commercial machine. I've talked about this many times on the on the Honda Snowblower Enthusiast Facebook group. If it's a commercial machine, that is a machine that's used in snow removal business. It's used about 10 hours a day. The people that run them don't care about them, so they abuse them. They need an awful lot of work, and if it's for sale, you know it's no good. It's just going to be a money pit in most cases. If you're a mechanic, I'm sure you, you can probably use it and use it for parts, or you could probably fix it so it works, but you're going to be working on it a lot. So if it's a commercial machine, I always tell people, business machine, I tell people, nah, don't, don't get it. Not unless you... Don't mind working on it all the time, okay? When I service commercial machines, which I stopped doing because they just need so much work, the, the repair and maintenance cost is usually twice, sometimes triple from a homeowner's machine. So this was a homeowner's machine, so it was pretty good other than the carburetor and the gas tank. So... Uh, I would pass on commercial machines. All right, I already showed you. Oh, I wanted to show you this bucket again. This is a bad bucket. I look at the bottom of the bucket, to see if there's any damage like this. All the augers are all worn out. They don't have any teeth or serrations on the 624, 724, 828, 928, 1132, and uh, 1332 they have serrations you've got these teeth as i call them these are these are very very nice augers the, the skid the skid shoes have been kept adjusted properly and they're not hitting the ground and wearing out like these did and these augers are <coughs> 300 dollars a piece to replace so if you see this see the bottom of the bucket I'd pass on that for sure. Here's a here's the bottom of the bucket that you want to kind of see. Uh, this this bucket's about 25 years old and it's and it's gorgeous. Uh, a lot of times you you you're gonna see a little bit of damage, you know, and a little bit of damage and wear. So, sometimes that's not a really bad thing. Uh, it depends on how much damage there is. A lot of machines do have damage here because owners neglect the, the skid shoe uh, adjustment. So it just depends on how much damage this is. Uh, this one I would pass on, the augers. Augers will still work. They'll still collect snow and everything, but you have to work the machine slower, and it won't bite down and cut into a berm. Here are the augers on an 80. These are the augers you see on a 50, a 55, a 70, and an 80. These are pretty good augers, actually. You got your splits here for cutting. They work well. They collect snow well. And this is the, the augers are not bent over. It's not too hard to fix that. I'll show some other time. These are pretty good augers for this machine. That's why I really considered buying it. Well, I actually bought it for parts. Uh, once you've looked over the machine and tried, uh, inspected it, like I told you earlier, and, you know, check things out a little bit, then you want to, well, one last thing, you want to check your handlebars and see if they've been welded. If there's cracks and they're welded or, or usually you can tell because the handlebar is a little bit crooked. Um, actually, don't be afraid if you see a machine that's had the handlebars welded. If it's done by a, a good welder, your, those handlebars are going to be better uh, than new. So uh, don't be afraid of that. Here's a, a set of handlebars. I wanted to show you it came off of a commercial machine see this is not done by a professional 
if you see something like this, uh, don't walk away, run away. It's a commercial machine, most likely, or an amateur uh, welder that really didn't care. It, it kind of works. I mean, it does work. It is, it is working, but um, if the machine looks like this up at the handlebars, the rest of the machine is probably trashed also. I just put these handlebars on this chassis just to show you what to look for on, on a set of extremely bad handlebars. But like I said before, if it's been welded, it's not, it doesn't mean pass on the machine. If it's been welded by a, a welder or somebody knows how to weld, then, uh, then it's probably stronger than, than the original bars. Now, once you've decided that, okay, this looks pretty good. Uh, I want to run it now. So on this machine, it has an external choke. Pull the choke out, turn the, turn the key on, the gas is on, start it up. See if it starts up easily, one or two pulls usually. Uh, it should start, it shouldn't smoke. Uh, some of the older machines might smoke a little bit at the beginning and then stop smoking, which is, to me, it's not too bad. If it keeps on smoking, then you're talking about uh, engine problems. I'd probably pass on it. So you, you start it up, let it, let it warm up, and then once it's warmed up, then you can check the drive. Now, I've seen machines like this that look pretty good and they want $1,500, $2,000 or whatever. I take it for a drive. I'll put them, warm up the machine. Once the machine's warmed up, you just, you open up the choke plate. Here's your transmission. On this machine, it's an automatic transmission hydrostatic and I'll take it for a drive and what you're looking for when testing the drive is the smoothness you want to you want to make sure that it drives smoothly forward and backwards forward and backwards take it for an extended drive see how smooth it is if it's jerking if it's jerking too much and you and you feel a jerk in it pass on the machine. If, if you're hearing clicking noises, then I would pass on the machine because if you have jerking or clicking, your right side final drive gear, uh, gearbox machine uh, gearbox is going to be need, need to be rebuilt. And that's anywhere from a 600 to a thousand dollar machine, a thousand dollar repair. So you want to make sure it drives forwards and backwards nice and smoothly. Like I said, you want to test the lockdown feature, which if you, I don't have two hands here. You, you put down your drive handle, put down this handle, it should lock in. If it doesn't lock in, it's really not too much of a big deal. We've had articles about this. It's a simple fix. So you want to check that also. You want to check your your chute, make sure it turns nice. Uh, this one's not turning very nice. The, the owner brought it in for a service. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. But it, it probably needs some uh, lubrication or adjustment. And then you want to have the seller have the seller lock down the auger handle. You want to watch the augers turn. They should turn nice smoothly with no <coughs> clicking and clacking and all kinds of noise and uh, you want to know that you want to uh, it's hard to check the impeller bearing actually but there's an impeller bearing on the other side of this impeller and it's this I'm pulling on it it's nice and tight there's no play but if there's too much play I'd say, wait a minute, I want to inspect this a little bit more. I'll take off the, uh, I'll take off the, uh, the belt cover, inspect the belts too for wear. You check the underside of the belts and you can also, uh, let me show you. 
I don't have, oh, here's one. Here's a machine with the bell cover off. I want to inspect the underside of the belts. Feel, you can pull it along. You don't have to take the belt off. And uh, you, can, you can pull along and feel the underside. Feel for some cuts or whatever. Do the same thing for your, for your dry belt. Uh, that could be expensive if you have to remove the, re, if you have to change this, you have to remove the bucket. And I think a shop will charge you like $150 to remove the bucket and replace it and change the belts and change the impeller bearing. Another way to check the impeller bearing is your auger pulley wheel. You can try moving it back and forth. And if there's a lot of play, then you're going to have to remove your bucket and replace the impeller bearing. If you can do this all yourself, it's no big deal. But if you have to pay a shop for it and you're looking at a machine to buy, this is a 724 that I got on a trade in. Um, I can do all the work myself if it needed an impeller bearing and needed belts, if it needed carburetor work because it was running rough. I, if I was you, I'd probably pass on it because you're talking hundreds of dollars. You're going to bring it to the shop for a service and you're talking four, five, six hundred dollars. Unless the rest of the machine doesn't look too bad and it, it runs good and it, and it drives smoothly. And if the price is right, now that's another thing. The price has to be right. Like if they wanted only $500 for this machine, and I says, okay, I got to put another 500 into it, and then I'll have a really nice machine. I'd say, okay, maybe you should, you should buy it. Uh, people bring over machines all the time to me and say, hey, Anthony, can you check this machine out? The seller wants uh, 1500 or 1000 or or 2000 or whatever, and I'll check it out. And I says, okay, buddy, uh, it's going to need a couple hundred dollars of work. That's kind of routine. Like I said before, uh, most machines are not serviced. If it needs the belts and a new, a new bearing, if it needs a couple cables, if it needs some carburetor work, I'm saying, okay, it's going to be a lot more. It's going to be three, four, five hundred dollars It could be more. But if the price is right, I might say, hey, I think the price is right. And then for another couple hundred, three or four hundred dollars, we can have a nice machine out of this. And then I'd say, okay, I, 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 I think you should buy it because I'll test it out pretty well. Like I tried to explain here, I'll make sure that the drive is, is uh, nice and uh, smooth for the normal person. If you've got clicking or making noise when it's driving or jerking, I said, now nah, pass on this machine because you're looking at a minimum of 600 to a thousand dollars just to re just to repair the gearbox that that drives your tracks and that's not counting the service the service could be another two or three four hundred dollars for the rest of the machine so i'd say okay pass on that machine i'm trying to think if there's anything else i can think of um i can't think of anything else so if, if i missed anything please make a comment or a question below and i will get to your questions and comments uh, if you like this video if you think it's going to help you save money on your next purchase please like and subscribe to the honda snowblower enthusiast channel and i will see you guys next time thank you